Good evening, Kena family and friends. Thank you for joining this, us this evening for the Canaan online Christmas celebration. All right. Can you say, woohoo, wherever you are? Come on. Praise the Lord. My name is Brian and I am your host tonight. And uh, we are very grateful to God for opportunities like this to gather in to celebrate Christmas in a very, very special way on Zoom. I want to acknowledge all of us that we welcome you once again to this online space to celebrate Christmas together. Welcome, welcome all of you. You know, tonight we have um, lined up many, many things for all of us and, and I believe that it's going to be very meaningful with lots of fun and most importantly, bring us to that deep sense of hope in God. So I want you to right now take a look at the next slide. And uh, look at the program lineup right now. All right, so this is actually the program lineup, and and as you look at the six item there, I want to you to I want to bring attention to that last item in tonight's program. That's right, the last item, and the last item is the blessing day. The blessing day. Okay. Now, what I would like you to do is this. I would like you to really whip up your phone right now, like what I'm doing here, and you will see in that slide, the Blessing Deep slide, uh, a QR code. And right now, take out your phone and scan the QR code, right? Scan the QR code and enter two things. Enter your name and enter your contact number because that will, that will qualify you for the Blessing Deep tonight. Amen. Okay, now, I'm going to explain to all of us the mechanics of this whole uh, event tonight. Now, if you have any question or any comments, please use the Zoom chat box to pose them there. The Zoom chat box is right at the bottom of your screen, okay? And also, please rename your Zoom account to your actual name and then use the speaker view. Now, where is the speaker view? That is the button on the top right corner of your Zoom screen. On top of that, please also remain muted throughout the entire program unless you're instructed to, okay? The mute button is on the bottom left. Praise the Lord. Let's start our program tonight with songs about Jesus and also songs singing to our King Jesus. He is the reason for tonight's the, the season and that's right. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let's join our worship team right now, Albert and his team, and let's join our hearts together to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Are you ready? Let's worship Him right now. Praise the Lord. We sing joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven the nature sing. And heaven the nature sing. And heaven and heaven the nature sing. Rocks, hills, and plains Rip me 
an overwhelming joy when we know that we have Jesus in our heart. This December, let's take this time to remember that He was given for us. That He has showed His unconditional love. We praise You, O God. All the days of our life, we will shout to the Lord. All the earth, we will sing. Power and majesty. Praise to the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's take this time. We bow down and sing for Him, church. Oh, we praise your name, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we declare that you're King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, we adore you, God. We will sing. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will 
Jesus. We praise your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Indeed, we praise the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, indeed, Christmas is not only about the birth of Jesus, but it's also about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And the question for all of us is this, is Christ the Lord in our lives tonight? You know, friends, the question, this question makes a huge difference for all of us, especially when we are living in these dark days where fear tries to rule and hopelessness tries to reign. In these dark days, fear tries to rule and hopelessness tries to reign. For many, it feels like there was no way out. Everyone is looking around and sees nothing. Nothing but a lost hope that seems like running away the more you chase it down. It has been hard for everyone. Lost jobs, doors were shut, empty seats, masks on faces. Gone are the days that we even hugged each other. Not even our own shadows could touch another. COVID-19 pandemic forced us to continue to walk into the unknown. Living through its ramifications, we find ourselves bouncing to and fro, waiting for a time to live our so-called normal lives again. Uncertainty has apparently lived in every single soul, counting the days and asking each other, when is this going to be over? Clearly, we have our limits. Our lives are slipping through our fingers like sand in our tiny hands. And as we also heard, life is like a vapor. Here today, gone the next. These are the days that we live in. And as always, we are not in control. But there is hope. Because with God, our rights in life can be a little less bumpy. Because God is real and present in our days of darkness and valley moments. Good evening, Church. My name is Georgina Leong. I'm 70 years old. So I can truly share with you that life is never a bed of roses. We have our ups and downs. But as Christians, we can look forward to God to help us to ride over this life a little less bumpy because our hope is always there with God. My personal life has gone through two deep valleys. The first one was in year 2007 when I was 56 years old. My mother passed away that year. I was not a Christian then, and neither was the whole family, except for a niece who was then a university student at the NTU. We were devastated. Her departure was totally unexpected. In fact, we just came home from a family annual vacation just three months ago. We grieved in our own separate private ways. I was then working at the Adelphi. In fact, I was working in that area for 20 years. And every day when I go to the office, I have to pass by St. Andrew Cathedral. One morning, as I went to the office, I looked up and saw that signboard. That signboard was a property of the church and uh, I've never looked at it. But that morning, I do not know why I looked up and the signboard said, If your heart is weary and burdened, come to me. The next morning, I walked past the signboard. I stopped intentionally and looked at it again. The third morning, I stopped at the signboard. I looked up and I said to the signboard, I will come to you this Sunday. How can you help me? I then spoke to my sister, who is the mother of uh, the niece who is a Christian, to bring me to church. The following year, I was baptized. I had breast cancer in uh, October 2012 and uh, it was stage one. I was not fearful nor worried then because I was already a Christian by then. I leave everything to God. I had a mastectomy done and I was good again and I continue to live a happy life as usual. My second deep valley happens just two months ago in October 2021. I was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. The cancer has gone to the bones and also affected my right eye such that I see double vision now. And because of that, I need to hire a maid at the suggestion of my doctor. I was also hospitalized for five days in SGH. I am a great believer of insurance. Since my younger days, I took up many insurance policies to safeguard myself and I paid $20,000 a year in insurance premium. 
But suddenly, I realized that I could not claim my critical illness policy and neither could I claim my surgical and hospitalization policy. So you can see that human plan is full of loopholes. Only God plan is good. So my monthly medical expenses is $5,600 per month. So you can imagine how expensive it is. And on top of that, I have to pay out of my pocket $14,000 for the five days of hospitalization. So all the while before this episode, I thought that I was financially sound. But now I realize that I'm actually not so. But in spite of this financial setback, I still have faith in God. In order to tie over this difficult period, I have to redeem one of my life policies to secure over $1,000 to pay for my current medical expenses. In fact, this, this monthly is actually I save up for my world cruise to be undertaken in 2025. So now this cruise is no more. But still, I never lose hope in God. I even never ask God, why me? I still trust God. I'll be lying if I say that I have no moments of despair. One night, as I lay in bed, I was in one of my down modes. And when I closed my eyes, suddenly I saw a signboard flash across my, the eyes, probably my mind. The signboard only has one word, Johnny. I know of only one Johnny in my whole life. He is a childhood friend since primary school days, and he's now a neighbor. He had cancer, but he's now good again. He continued to drive his car around. He continued to play golf. So I believe that this message from God is that I can be good again. Although this message did not say that I can be healed, but I know that I can trust in God that I can be normal again. I can continue to live a happy life. I still look towards God and I hope that He will give me a third signboard to tell me how to move on. I, in fact, I cling on to God as a life boy and I believe that as I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, He will guide me out. I trust in the Lord and that is the, my sharing for, with you today. Have a fantastic Christmas. I wish you, God bless us all. Thank you. These two years of darkness failed to stop the light from flying by. Indeed, God is our source of light and hope. Because we are here. We are still here. Some went, some stayed. And yet we are here. Still possessing a promise of hope saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hearing the words coming from the compassionate God declaring, I have loved you with an everlasting love. The pandemic may have caused waves of trials that may seem to overtake us, yet Jesus in us remains greater. The testing that was meant to destroy us within was just the exact fire we needed to purify our character. The worry that was meant to steal our confidence in God's promises was used for good to remind us to trust God even better. Truly, the darkness that we thought a weapon was just part of the engine for us to keep going. Our God remains faithful and He remains powerful. He holds the universe in His hand, so nothing surprises Him at all. God's power didn't change, and His will will always prevail. And that's the beauty of knowing God. We can rely on His good intentions. We can depend on His faithful directions. If our sins, which are much worse than any inconvenience we encounter in this world, were given a solution by God Himself, then He is much more than willing to save us from our temporary troubles. Our God sent His own beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to be the light of this world. That those who believe in Him shall not perish, giving us the opportunity to be much more concerned about the promise of eternal life. This is our real hope. The Bible says in John 1.15 that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. Regardless of the darkness that this age may experience, the light that shines in us through our Lord Jesus will never be put out. This kind of hope is not an illusion and a crisis is certainly not a thing to fear. Jesus as our source of our light shall remain greater. We are alive in Him and through Him our faith shall remain stronger. This is our hope. And this hope, His name is Jesus. Amen, amen. We have this hope and this hope 
is in this name, and his name is Jesus. Let me pray right now. Truly, God, this is hope, and his name is Jesus. His light shines bright in the midst of darkness. Our hope in him carries us through the dark moments. Like Georgina, in her testimony, we can truly say, Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Now, next is a song presentation by Daniel and the worship band. And may this song, as you listen to it, point us to the light, the true light, who is Christ Jesus, and thus show us the way of life. Let's listen in right now. The most beautiful night of the year All the stars light up the sky And the city is sparkling with silver and gold From a million points of light A reflection of something that's deeper within Just a flicker of something Would you give a big, big hand at home for Daniel and his team for this beautiful song, Truly Jesus is the Light of the World. Amen. Now, is everybody still doing okay at home? Give me a wave if you are still doing okay, right? Give me a wave. Yeah, I can see you. Give me a wave. All right. 
because we need you right now to do a bit of work out with some online interactive games. So to help us with this, let me introduce you to the two games I see right now, and they are Amos and Abigail. So let's welcome them right now to lead us in the games. So right now on the screen, you're going to see this PowerPoint slide uh, of the Basing Deep. Yeah, if you have not registered yet, what are you waiting for? Go to take your phone, scan the QR code, and then type in your name and your phone number, and then you'll qualify to actually win a prize that is worth $150. Wait, $150? Yes. Wow, okay, I better sign up. So everybody at home, please take out your phones, or you can click on the link, I think it's in the chat somewhere. Sign up for the Blessing Dip right now. Right, but... but so once everyone has signed up for the Blessing Dip, it's now time, like what Pastor Brian said, it's now time for games. And it is Canaan's Virtual Christmas Bingo! So I hope everyone's excited. So everyone, please gather around your laptops, your televisions, and get ready as I share the instructions, all right, for our Virtual Christmas Bingo. So I'm sure many of us are familiar with how bingo works, all right? But allow me to go through some instructions first. So... The next slide will show some of the instructions on the screen. Okay? So number one is that you'll be playing as a group. Okay? So as many of us are gathered at home, we encourage everybody to be playing as a group. Okay? So what this means is that, let's say there's five of you at home, one person can fulfill one box, so I can fulfill one box, and Amos can fulfill one box. Right? So teamwork makes a dream work. Yeah? And you know, if you want to play as a, uh, however, if you want to play as an individual, that's completely okay as well. So number two is that no materials are needed, right? Because the bingo sheet will be on screen on Zoom right here, right? So you have to keep your eyes peeled and the boxes will be, will be revealed on the slides one by one. Okay, so after each box is revealed, you can then quickly share um, with those around you. For example, box one over here, it says, um, seen snow. So afterwards, you know, I can share with Amos, you know, where have I seen snow? If I have, right? Okay, and... Afterwards, number three is really what does a bingo mean, right? It's three in a row, three in a column, or three in a diagonal. That's a bingo. And what do you do when you get a bingo? It's point number four. Go into the Zoom chat and type down bingo and the three box numbers that you have gotten in the bingo, be it a row or diagonal, all right? And so an example is shown on the screen at the moment. So you see um, box one is seen snow, five gone out carrot. Caroling and number nine is head ice skates. So you have done all of these, right? Go into the Zoom chat, proceed to Zoom chat, and type down bingo one five nine. All right, and this is very important. You know why? Because you know the first three groups, the first three groups will be getting a prize. Okay, so do note that you know we will be verifying whether or not you have truly achieved the bingo by inviting you to share afterwards. Right. Once verified, once verified, we will need the winners to then share your contact details to our admin group here on Zoom so that we can make the necessary arrangements to send the prize over to you guys. And before we start, just one last thing. Please note that we will be revealing all the nine boxes, all the nine boxes, yeah, before we then check the chat for the winners. Okay, you can still bingo, right? Even when, let's say we have revealed five of the boxes, that's fine, right? If you've done many things this Christmas, that's great. Right, but we will be only checking the chat after the nine boxes. So just stay tuned, keep sharing, and hope everybody's ready. Right, so that's all the instructions I have. Amos, are you ready? Yeah, ready. All right, so let's, with that, let's begin the Canaan Christmas Bingo. Okay, so let's bring up the first box, yeah? And first box, please. First box is box number three, right? It is, you have had a Christmas-themed food this December, all right? This should be easy for many, honestly. Singaporeans are such foodies, you know? I've actually had um, a ton of ham and really just a lot of lock cakes this December. So if you at home, if you guys have had um, Christmas team food, do share them with one another right now and take note, all right? Okay. All right. Let's see the next box. Have celebrate Christmas overseas. Yeah, so if you have celebrate Christmas overseas, yeah, before, yeah, this box is for you. Yeah, there's a time that actually I celebrate Christmas overseas. I had to go to China at the time for a change program. Mm. And I have to eat hot pot for Christmas. Yeah, but nonetheless, if you have done it, this box, you can check it. 
Right. All right. Thanks, Ema. So now let's have the next box. The next box is box number five. You can share what Christmas means to you. You know, Christmas can mean so many different things to every one of us, right? I think for myself, simply put, really, it's Jesus Christ. You know, he is the reason for this season. Maybe I just want to, you know, ask Amos, you know, what does Christmas mean to you? Yeah, for me, Christmas is a remembrance of Jesus you know, giving, uh, coming down to earth. And because of the birth of Christ, there's also a birth of hope for humanity that God has sent His Son so that we, as human beings, has this chance to know God. Alright. So, I hope you have shared you know, what Christmas means to you in your family. However, let's move on to the next box. Okay, so, the next one is No a Christmas Carol. I think this one must be very, very simple. Yeah, because if not, uh, even last week, we even sing some caroling songs. Yeah. So, if you know a Christmas carol, you can check this box. Alright, yeah. So, keep sharing, yeah? Okay, we're going to be moving to the next box. Now, can we have the next box? It is box number seven. And it is if you have listened to Christmas songs before Christmas Day. You know, I have definitely done this. In fact, you know, I've listened to Christmas songs as early as October. Wow, so early, yeah. Yeah, I'm a little bit excited. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here. And with that, I'm excited for the next box. Amos. Yeah, so what is the next box? Right. Have an interesting Christmas tradition. Yeah, this will be very interesting. So in your in your group, share if you have this Christmas uh, tradition that you practice. For me, yeah, I've been trying to do uh, read the Christmas narrative yeah, before uh, at Christmas Eve, before it hits uh, midnight. And... I know of friends you know, who even do this as a family. Yeah, they will even light the candle together as a family. And then they end off by praying for each another. Yeah, so if you've got an interesting Christmas tradition, yeah, you can share it in your family or in the groups that you're gathering. But now, let's see the other boxes. Alright, yeah, I'm really excited to hear everyone's Christmas tradition. You know, I've, I see some, some people bingo already, but we're going to carry on. Like I said, we're going to fill up all the nine boxes, yeah? And the next box, please. It's number box number one, right? It's you have watched the Christmas movie this year. You know, my family and I, we actually watch this series, um, called, of, uh, this series of Christmas movies on Netflix. It's called A Christmas Prince. I think my mom and my dad are probably laughing at home at the moment. But yeah, there's really something about Christmas movies that, you know, they really bring people together, just this sense of warmth. Right, and with that, we have two more boxes. Amos, what's the next box? Let's see what's the next box. Have put a Christmas deco at home. Wow, this one, sad to say, uh, my family, we don't put a uh, Christmas deco at home. Man. Yeah, but maybe I heard that you have Christmas deco at home. Yeah, at home we have this. Okay, I, I may butcher this word, but it's the parole, right? So at home, at the windows, is this um, this star, this light, right? Um, um, it's very common in the Philippines and we have that up. So that's our Christmas decor, right? And with that, you know, I... Hope all of you guys have your Christmas decorations up. And I hope you guys are ready for the last box. And the last box is box number four. Can we have it up? All right. And box number four is you have participated in a gift exchange or secret center this year. You know, I have, right? And actually one friend group of mine, have, we have this interesting, I don't know, Christmas tradition when it comes to our secret center. We actually call it our Daiso Team Secret Center. And yeah, we did it again this year. It's really economical, I must say. You know, just some ideas for you guys if you need some Chris secrets, you need some secret center ideas, right? And with that, you know, we have all the nine bingo boxes. So everybody at home, I hope you guys have been sharing with one another and we're really excited to hear um, from the winners. All right. Alright, we have some winners over here already. Yeah, so let's see. Yeah, before we announce the winner, yeah, I know that you have been sharing everything, but what are the prizes? What are the prizes? Yeah. Hmm. Right, so anyway, we got prizes for the first three bingo. So maybe let's take out the first prize at uh, the third prize. The third prize? Yeah, the third prize. Alright. I'm gonna just reach on over here. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna put my mic down. Yeah. Yeah. So you're ready to see the price. 
All right, you can see that this is a hamper. Yeah, so for the first three bingos, you all will get this hamper so that you all can go back and even share with your groups or your family members. All right, so now, without further ado, we can put down the hamper and let's see who is the third one. The third one. All right. Do you, do you want to announce it? I can announce it. Yeah, so we have Kim. Oh, Kim. Kim. All right. All right. So maybe let's spotlight Kim. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. Can we see her numbers? Her numbers are 3, 5, and 7. 3, 5, and 7. Wow. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> All right. So, Kim. Hello yeah. there. Hello. All right. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas to you. Yeah. So, just want to check. Yeah. So, who in your group? Has a Christmas team food in December? Well, we have lot cake, we have turkey, <laughs> yes, we have um, pork belly, yep. belly. yes, and a lot of chocolates, <laughs> Christmas chocolates, Santa Claus chocolates, yeah. Wow, that really sounds like a Christmas feast for you, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, this one the curious, you know, maybe for number five, can you share what Christmas means to you? Uh, Christmas means uh, hope. Christmas means salvation. Yeah, Christmas means new life. Just thankful that uh, Jesus died for us so that we can be safe from this life and to have eternal life. Wow, thank you for sharing for what Christmas means to you. Yeah, so Kim, so uh, would you just write down your, uh, your handphone number to SCCC2, yeah, privately, so you can just write down your handphone number to SCCC2 so that we can contact you in how to collect the hamper, all right? All right, so who's the next? All right, person? I think the second place is Richard Wong. Pas is that Pastor Richard Wong? Oh, yes. Pastor Richard Wong. All, All right. right, can we have him spotlighted? All right, hi, Pastor. Hi, Pastor Richard. Oh, finally, oh. I can be uh, as a staff. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. All right, I see over here that you have written three, six, and nine. Everywhere. Right. <laughs> Everywhere. All right. Okay. Maybe you could share with us the f um, number six. You know, you have celebrated Christmas overseas. Can you share with us? You know, where have you celebrated? And how was the experience like? Well, we spent quite a few years in US. So, uh, so we have uh, many Christmas in US. Families. With uh, many different families. With different families in US. <laughs> I think we also celebrate a bit of Christmas in Norway. Wow. Wow, really global. All right. So maybe you could share the sec uh, another one, right? It's number nine. It's you guys have an interesting Christmas tradition. I'm really interested to hear, right? What is this interesting <laughs> Christmas tradition that you have? Uh, I don't know how interesting it's interesting to you, but uh, we keep through the tradition of having family Christmas dinner together. Yes. Uh, and then right after dinner, we were sing carols. Then we games, uh, nativity games, and then give exchange uh, one at a time. We take time for exchanging gifts and everybody wow here, wow there for this is the Christmas gift that I really wanted, you know, kind of uh, saying. Yeah, so we keep to that tradition every year. Oh. Except, except of course our uh, COVID year. <laughs> Yeah, every year without fail. Wow, you know, Amos, that is truly a Christmas tradition. Yeah. All right. And with that, we want to thank you, um, um, Pastor Richard and family. Congratulations on winning one of the prizes. And now we have, I think we have our first prize, right? Yeah. Hey, I think they haven't seen the first prize yet. Oh, okay. I'll go get it. Hold yeah. on. All right. Okay, I need the help. Uh, right. Uh -huh. you can see. Yeah, it's even covering my face. Yeah, so this is the first prize for the bingo. So, okay, let me put this hamper down first. Huh? Alright, so who is the winner for the first prize? 
Okay, forgive me if I didn't, if I pronounce it wrongly. So it's Wood Ling. The Wood Lay CG. Ah, Wood Lay CG. Alright, wow, team effort. Wood Lay CG. Can we see who's Wood Lay CG? You, ha- you guys have well, three, you're... five, and seven. Three, I can't see you guys. Yeah. Is it a silent night over the other side? Hang on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, hope to see your CG space. Huh? Yeah. yeah, did you not see the prize? We need to see you guys. <gasps> wow! Hello! Hello! <laughs> right, y'all got a big hamper to share huh, with everyone as a CG. Yeah, so y'all got three, five, we and seven. We want the size. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so maybe you start off with number five. Yeah, so what is... What is Christmas means to you? Yeah, maybe one of y'all who actually checked this box can share. Okay, I share. I share. Yes. Uh, right, all right. Busy cooking. <laughs> busy cooking. Busy. So Christmas means busy. Oh, okay. Busy cooking. Busy cooking. Is that the same for everybody or is it just Auntie Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Alright, let's look at seven. Listen to Christmas before Christmas Day. So who checked that box? Yeah, we all. Oh, all of you are. Yeah, yeah, maybe this we had carols before our dinner. Wow, carols before your dinner. You know what? Maybe you could get them to sing even. Uh, they, they, we are going I'll... to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So congratulations. Y'all got the first prize for the bingo. Yeah, so remember, for those who have bingo, please leave your contact number in privately to SCC2. Yeah, so that we can contact you privately in how to collect the hamper. Yeah, so other than talking about the hamper, yeah, I think for the rest of the people who didn't win the hamper, I think it's okay for them, right? Is it? Yeah, you know why? Why? Because the blessing did. <gasps> You're right, the blessing did. So this is the last call for the blessing did. So again, we're going to show the PowerPoint. As we wait for the PowerPoint. Yes, this is again your chance to win a prize. They are worth $150. So please scan, fill in their particulars and you will be qualified to win. However, there is a closing time that we will close the registration when the message starts. So it's going to happen soon. So don't miss this opportunity. Scan and do it now. Yeah. And with that, we wish you a Merry Christmas! Christmas! Hey, back to you, Pastor. All right. All right. Thank you, Amos and uh, Abigail. That is really exciting. Good job, all right, Help, helping us have some kind of uh, Christmas cheer and fun. So thank you for leading us in bingo. Now, church and friends, as we settle down after all the fun and activities, we want you to right now hear a message of hope tonight. And it's really about knowing the light in the midst of darkness in COVID-19 times. So tonight, we are very happy to have Pastor Philip Juan with us speaking about the light. And uh, Pastor Philip Juan has been running a church consultancy ministry called Church Life Resources, helping churches to grow biblically and growing in health. And he has been a pastor for many, many years, so he would understand the struggles of many people. So I would like you to just sit back, relax, but open your heart to the Lord, to God, for what he wants to speak to you and me through Pastor Philip. Let us welcome Pastor Philip right now to hear his message. Welcome to Singapore Christian Canaan Church. We hope that this Christmas you will have a meaningful time here to learn something about God, the meaning of Christmas, and also to have a meaningful time with your friends and your family. You know, COVID-19 has forced many of us to have that mandatory time at home. HBL, quarantines, work from home. You know, a story was once told of a family because they faced all these quarantines and all this. They had this hobby that they developed of putting jigsaw puzzles together. And the father would regularly bring home puzzles of a greater and greater difficulty. On Christmas Day, 
he presented his family with a puzzle of over 1,000 pieces. And as they opened the box, they immediately tackled the puzzle. After an hour, the family was frustrated. No matter how hard they tried, they couldn't get the puzzle started. Then the father discovered that he had accidentally switched the box cover with the cover from another puzzle. And so the picture that they had been looking uh, on, on the box cover, was not the puzzle that they were actually doing. Christmas is sometimes like that. You know, we look at the wrong picture and we get misled into what Christmas is all about. What we see is that Christmas lights, glitzy, you know, uh, shopping, a great shopping experience, maybe even holiday travel, although, you know, in the light of the pandemic, uh, that has been scratched off um, uh, the list of many of us. But we often buy into that picture of Christmas and it's the wrong picture. We get frustrated because it doesn't fit our need and understanding in life. Even pre-COVID and through these pandemic times, Christmas can actually be one of the loneliest times for some people. Ask the soldier who can now guard duty during Christmas. Ask the person who cannot find a job for the last few months. Ask the wife who has lost her husband in an accident or due to sickness. Ask the single parent who struggles to raise her, her child who, who may be autistic or dyslexic. And then we look at the Christmas lights, the advertisements about shopping and Christmas joy. And we ask, why would God celebrate at a time like this in the midst of our struggles and our difficulties? Why does God allow some of these things to happen? What kind of God is he really like? When we look at the wrong picture, we often feel frustrated about life and the things that happen around us. And I want to submit to you that we need to look at the right picture of Christmas. A picture that is really on God's heart that will lead us to enable to make sense of the life that God intended for us to have. The message of Christmas is that God has a heart for those of us who are struggling. You know, look with me at this Bible's picture of the Christmas story. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinus was governor of Syria. And everyone went down to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. I was born in KK Hospital. How many of you were born there too? Okay, if you're watching this, whoever it is, put up your hands. Okay, if you're born in KK Hospital. And you know, just look to the left, look to the right. If you see someone, you know, with their hands raised, hey, you got something in common with that person. I heard of some people who were born in a taxi or something like that, you know, rushing to the hospital. Any of you were born in a taxi cab or something? Could you raise your hands? You know, if, if you do, please drop a, a note to the church. I'm sure we're excited to hear of such an interesting story. Okay, but I'm sure that very few or nobody was born in a manger with animals, right? How's that for having your world turn upside down? Joseph and Mary traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Do you know how far that is? Google Maps puts it as 157.1 kilometers. That is the travel time of two hours, one minute by Route 6. Now, I assume that's by driving. So how long do you think it would take you know, by sitting a pregnant woman on a donkey and walking that distance. And they had to do this because the government had ordered a census. This census forced everyone to go back to their hometown. Now, how's that for a disruption? We have all used this word disruption to describe the pandemic that has upheaved our work life, you know, our, our children's schooling, our finances, and, and our emotional wellness. Disruption. And disruptions occurred to people from time immemorial. So for Mary and Joseph, the entire region goes through a law-imposed disruption in the midst of their childbirth. They would have to worry about travel, safety, tiredness, health, unborn uh, a child, and the worst timing, giving birth in a manger. Yet in the midst of all these worries and responsibilities, it is in the midst of disruption that God visits them and changes their lives. That's why the Bible's picture of Christmas is a real-to-life Christmas. 
It's about a Christmas that deals with worries, responsibilities, and the disruptions of real life. It's not about gifts and glitz and shopping. It's a Christmas with the worries of life. That's the real picture of Christmas. The Christmas story goes on to tell us, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. Now, you must understand this. The shepherds at the time were the lower educated people. Compared to the carpenters, the businessmen, the builders, and the teachers, the shepherds were less educated, and they were viewed often as lowly. Many of them were considered to be untrustworthy. That's why they were often put out in the wild to do the work. And yet when the angels came, the first group that they visited were the shepherds. It's like, you know, imagine a visiting ambassador came to Singapore. We welcome him, okay, with the red carpet. It splashes in a newspaper. Ambassador makes VIP visit to Singapore. But the first person that he sees is not the prime minister. It's not any of the ministers. Rather, he goes to the migrant workers and, and he says to them, you know, I know you're far from home. I know you're homesick. I know your loved ones have, may have passed away while you're here. And he spends time with them, talking with them, uh, before even talking to our prime minister or our ministers. And he might be saying, wait, wait, wait. How could a visiting ambassador do that? You see, God sent his ambassador angels not to the kings or the priests, but first to the shepherds. And if there is one singular thing that this Christmas story tells us about God, is that God cares for those who are struggling. God has a heart for those who are in difficulty. And I wonder if today you are struggling today. It's Christmas time when everyone is supposed to be happy, but you're unhappy. At the end of the year, the family is supposed to get together, but you feel lonely. These are the real-to-life struggles. And that's why the Bible tells us the true picture of God and what God intended Christmas to be about. It's a picture that turns our heads around because it's not the picture we expect. Pre-pandemic pandemic, or even through the pandemic times, often man wants to appear confident, but God connects with our struggles. And that's the God of the Christmas story. Christmas for you today may not be a likes, gifts of shopping, but a real struggle. You know, I remember Charles Spurgeon, a well-known preacher in the 18th century. On the outside, everyone looked to him as a great preacher, a great communicator. But, you know, on the inside, he often struggled with challenges that he faced and even faced depression. Time and time again, God walked with him through his darkest times. He wrote in his journals that we read that God came in and changed his perspective. He wrote, I would come in tears after my work and my wife would read to me from an encouraging motivational book and I would be in tears. But I came to realize that depression makes me trust God. It makes me understand and empathize with people. And through it, God brings a new perspective and empowerment into my life. Spurgeon became a great communicator that people looked up to because he was wrestling with depression and God changed his perspective. The Bible tells us an angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and said to them, I bring you good news of great joy. You see, this good news changed their perspective amidst the gloom. Friends, are you in a difficult, challenging situation today that does not seem to change? When things on the outside, as it were, are beyond your control, you know, and, and they don't change and you need God to change your outlook and perspective on the inside. Do you need God to bring that new empowering into your life today? Friends, God wants to come in and at that point, when things all seem wrong, at that point, God wants to do something special. Will you look to God for your situation this Christmas and end of year? The Christmas story goes on to say, An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, what did the angel say? Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. If we are honest, we all have fears in life. Sometimes the fears that we have are significant and very challenging. What are some of the fears that people face through the seasons of their lives? When we're in our 30s, we fear about, can we keep pace with life? Can I fulfill the expectations upon me? Can I get a place to stay? You know, now people who are getting married are just wondering, I may not even have a place for a long time. When we get into our 40s, we fear about, is there all that this uh, is to life? I thought that perhaps I could have a, a marriage or a good job, but maybe I don't. What do I do? What if my job is at a dead end? Can I pivot in time? When we get into our 50s, you know, we, we fear about, 
why do these young people think I don't know anything? You know, why am I not on the cutting edge anymore? What can I do? When we get to the 60s, you know, we, we fear about how can I keep this up? When will they throw me out? You know, to cope with this change, people in the 50s and 60s, men and women are different. The men tend to, you know, relax, uh, watch TV on the couch, you know, and then they kind of noir, you know, as it were. Now, women, on the other hand, they tend to cope by trying new interests, new things. And therefore, in this season, you may get women who are strong, but men who are weak. So the, the older we grow, actually, we need to challenge men to rise up. Amen. And then there is the fear at the end of life. Ultimately, we all face this. Will anyone love me? Will there be someone that I can love? And across the board, this season cutting through all ages is the fear through the pandemic or the endemic. Will life ever get back to normal? How much more will my children lose a normal childhood growing up in this time? Can I cope with the loneliness, the isolation and the change? Will my job and uh, finances stabilize? The Christmas story tells us, the shepherds were terrified, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Man wants the appearance of confidence, but Christmas tells us God connects with our fears. Friends, whatever situation you're in, I believe that as we move into the next year, God wants to come in and do something in your life that is good. Amen? When God does a new thing in our lives, we often react with fear. That's why the Bible, uh, through the Bible, 365 times, God says, do not fear. Someone once said, God said, do not fear 365 times in the Bible, one for each day of the year, you know, because God wants to come in uh, to our lives and help us step out in faith every day of our lives. When we look at the times in the Bible where God says, do not fear, we, we discover how God connects with our fears and engage us. Firstly, fear comes when God wants to do a new work. In our story that we read today in the Bible, an angel of the Lord appears to them, the glory shines around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. I wonder if God is wanting to do something new in your life today. No, no, Straits Times, uh, some time back, uh, had an article uh, with the title, Three Things I Learned from a Wasted Two Years. And the writer shared three lessons. First, change is sometimes one way. It's hard to go back. Second, information is not always knowledge. And finally, he concluded with lesson number three. When the, ten when the pandemic closes a door, it opens a window. Friends, through all the changes you're facing today in the pandemic, is God wanting to open something new in your life? And maybe that's why you're afraid. Secondly, fear comes when God wants to bring to life something dead in you. You know, after Jesus wrote, rose from the dead, the Bible tells us in Matthew uh, chapter 28, suddenly Jesus met his disciples and says, Greetings! And they came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus says to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. You see, they, they feared because they saw Jesus resurrected. Is God wanting to resurrect something that you thought was dead and forgotten? But God says, I put that in you, and I want to bring it back alive again, and that's why you're afraid? Our struggles in the pandemic time, forcing you to revisit something you thought was past, you will never do again, but now you have to go back to it. Thirdly, Fear comes when God wants to lead you to cross over into a new calling. The Bible tells us that after the fishermen told all night with no catch, at the word of Jesus, they lowered their nets, they caught the biggest catch they've ever had. In the book of Luke, it says this, When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he, he and his, all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And then Jesus said to Simon, he's feeling unworthy, inadequate, not right with the Lord at all. Jesus says to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. And Simon follows Jesus into a new calling. Is God leading you into something new? Something you've never done before? And you feel unworthy, you feel inadequate, you don't even feel right with God. And that's why you're afraid. What are your fears as you go into the new year? 
What is the new thing that God is doing in your life that causes fear? Christmas is a time where God says, do not fear, I am with you. I remember years ago when my daughter Abigail uh, went for her first day in primary school. Uh, I thought I would stay back in school, you know, just to keep an eye on her, especially when she came out to the canteen for canteen break time, right? I was not the only one with that idea. Okay, I saw hordes, hordes of parents at the canteen break time. And there I was in the canteen, you know, working on my uh, emails on my laptop computer. And suddenly we were all ushered out of that part of the canteen. And they set up this uh, uh, police barricade yellow tape kind of lines, you know, around one, one part of the canteen. You know, and then the primary ones came out for the canteen break. And the swarm of parents were on the outside of the barricade. At first I thought that the barricade was to keep the young primary one children in so that they don't run off. But no. The barrier was not to keep the children in, it was to keep the parents out. Parents thronged the outside. I was trying to get a glimpse of my daughter. A man was standing in front of me, pressed against the barricade line. He was there for such a long time, blocking my view. And I was thinking, hasn't this guy seen enough? Can't he move aside to let other people have a turn? I finally tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around, there was a video camera in his hand. You know, and, and uh, he was saying, hey, do you want me to take a photo of your daughter for you? I was so disgusted, I'm telling you. Those parents not only fetched their children to school, they waited for them. They were concerned for their children, especially for those who had children experiencing their first day in school. I tell you personally, as a parent with that first child, first day in school, I wanted to let all the teachers know, hey, all you teachers, you take care of my child. You guide her well, you know. And if it was in my power, I would have gathered all the teachers that were going to teach her for the next few years and say to them, please, this is no ordinary child. This is my child. My heart and my love is with her. Be careful with her. Parents, you all know that kind of a feeling, yes? How do you think God felt for his only begotten son, Jesus Christ? The first day he sent his son into the school of the world. How do you think God felt? I suggest to you this is how God felt. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. You see, God sent an entourage to tell us, to announce to us, this is no ordinary child. This is my child. My heart and my love is upon him. A proud father just had to announce the birth of his only son. Years later, when Jesus grew up to be ready for his mission in life, as he was baptized, God again sent the Holy Spirit and a voice boomed from heaven. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. And out of love, God sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for you and for me, to make right all the mistakes that we have ever made. Parents, when you look upon your children and remember how much you love them, how you worried when they tried something new, like their first day at school, then you will know that there is a God who put that love in your heart. And it points to a God who really cares. God, the Heavenly Father, sent His only Son into the school of the world. And what a difficult school it was, wasn't it? Jesus was accused unjustly, beaten, tortured, crucified on the cross. And the Bible says that God intended this as a sacrifice for us. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What then can we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This perfect son, this special son whom God loved, he died for you and for me. He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, will he not also along with him graciously give us 
everything else. Some years back, an article in National Geographic described in Yellowstone Park in the US that there had been a huge forest fire. And in the aftermath, the forest rangers began to trek up the mountains uh, to assess the damage that the fire had caused. And one ranger found a bird literally petrified, perched on the ground. And it was not on the branches, but on the ground at the base of a tree. And this, this ranger thought it's strange because, you know, when there's a fire, a bird would try to fly away. If it was caught by the fire, it would be caught higher. Why would it be perched on the ground? And the ranger pushed over the bird with his stick. And when he gently struck it, three tiny chicks scurried out from under their dead mother's wings. The loving mother, keenly aware of the impending disaster, had carried her offspring to the base of the tree, you know, knowing instinctively that the toxic smoke would rise to the top. She, she could have flown to safety but refused to abandon her babies. And then the blaze had arrived, the heat had scorched her small body, the mother had remained steadfast. Because she had been willing to die, those under the cover of her wings would live. Friends, we have all made mistakes and sin. We have done wrong, we have uh, regrets, we have hurt others. We should be punished for the wrongs that we have done. But Jesus covered us under himself and died so that we who are under his covering could live. The Bible writes this, This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and had sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You know, Jesus Christ as an atoning sacrifice means a covering, a protection from the wrath for sin and wrongdoing, a covering under Jesus' perfect life that protects us, that required Jesus' sacrifice and death. So we do a quick rewind. 30 years earlier to Christmas Day, when this precious son was inserted into the palm of history, when Jesus was born. God wanted to give us a sign of that item of great value that was placed in a dismal situation. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. You know, Bible commentators tell us that these bands of swaddling cloth were a sign of great care. The baby was wrapped in long strips of cloth, giving the baby warmth and protection and a sense of security. I remember when my daughter Abigail was born, you know, the nurses taught us as parents how to wrap the baby up snugly and warmly. And, and there was one time I saw one of the parts of the cloth was crooked, so I thought it's better to unwrap her and rewrap it to make it straight. So when I unwrapped Abigail, she felt so cold. I still remember, you know, the picture of her reaching out her little, little tiny hand towards me and crying and wailing. Gana, my wife asked me, what are you doing? Why are you making our precious baby cold? You look at the stable where the animals were kept and you think, this is not the place for a baby. If you do see a baby, you expect that the baby may be thrown aside, unwanted, undernourished, abandoned. But instead, in the stable, you see a baby well cared for, wrapped snugly in cloth, firmly to keep the baby warm and secure. Friends, this is not a picture of a parent who did not care and just left a baby in the animal stable. It's a picture of a God who cares, who was watching over his son, but circumstances had forced him to put a precious and special boy into the stable into the manger. This is a picture of what God wants to do in your life. God wants to put something precious in us, even though our circumstances may be dismal or dark. This picture of putting something precious in us when we receive Christ is something very precious indeed. The Bible tells us man rejects weakness, but God connects with our potential. You know, I run a consultancy organization that helps uh, churches in ministry growth and leadership uh, development. And I've been doing this because God has put in my heart a desire to help churches. I remember in 2014, God gave me a vision of two trees. As trees were covering and protection in God's kingdom, God said to me, your ministry will be like a tree, like two trees that will help cover churches and bless God's people. God said, I will increase your reach to double it, not just one, but like two trees. You know, when I started out, I didn't know anything. I just wanted to help churches. 
I love to help churches in the ministry aspect, you know, leadership, cell groups, ministry, outreach. But I was struggling big time with the business aspect, marketing, uh, P&L, operations. Some of these business aspects, especially P&L and finances, are like the arch enemy of a pastor like myself, you know, who never had any financial training. But despite the struggle by God's providence and grace, the work has grown to a point where we now have several part-time staff that help in admin operations and IT. And this vision of two trees has been continually stirring in my heart because God keeps speaking to me about it. You know, and these years, by God's grace, God has opened the doors to bring about this consultancy into the mission field to help pastors in developing countries to coach them. And I've been blessed, you know, to be able to do work in India, Sri Lanka, and Philippines through online mission trips during the pandemic. Isn't that great? Amen? Great, isn't it? Please pray for us, you know. It's not an easy work. But I've been seeking God on how to raise more consultants, people who can think strategically, be anointed with insight to help churches, and I hope to be able to raise more consultant-capable people for churches. And we've been blessed to see our team grow. God says to me, as I have put in your heart, so have I filled it, to assign you to the churches I have purposed you to help, to grow the potential of not just one, but two trees for God's kingdom purpose. And that's something uh, very precious indeed. You know, when I first started, I didn't know a thing about business. I didn't have the capacities nor the competencies for consulting. It just started with a picture in my heart. In other words, I had potential. That's all I had. But God connected with that potential through his relationship with me and teaching me to hear his voice. Friends, God wants to connect with the potential that he has put in you. That potential could revolve around your business, your family, your work, your ministry, your relationships. But God wants to stir that potential in you through a relationship with you and teaching you to hear God's voice in your life. Potential is every book that you have not yet written, every song that you have yet to sing, every business you have yet to build, every life if yet to touch, that's potential. The cemetery is full of unmarked books, unwritten lives of people who live without reaching their full potential. But God, you know, He really wants to be able to come into our lives and do something very precious with us and connect with your potential. He wants to have that relationship with you where He awakens that potential to what you were meant to be. At the end of a God-ordained potential is... God himself. When God gives you a vision, he wants to work through your vision to impact people. And I want to say to you that the pandemic is a real stealer of potentials. Conflict, tiredness, woundedness. I see so much of this in people and in churches that I consult for in pandemic times. These are the things that rob people of their potential. But on Christmas Day, God put the light of his beloved son, Jesus Christ, into a dark and dismal manger, a light in the darkness that will grow and grow. That's potential. But at the end of a God-ordained potential is God himself. At the end of a God-ordained potential is God himself. That's why you need to draw nearer to God. That's why you need to know God for yourself. As you go into the new year, will you open your heart to God? And let God come in to connect with you. He connects with your struggles. He connects with your fears. Most of all, He connects with the potential that He has put in you. That is the God of Christmas. A God that is real to life. Come, let us pray. All right, huh? Are you in a struggle today? While Joseph and Mary had work issues, government imposed pressures, a disruption, so that they had to even give birth while on a long trip. In the midst of those struggles, God met with them. I believe God wants to meet with you in your struggles and in your disruptions. And I know that many of us have faced many disruptions. And we think that they disadvantage us. But in the scheme of God's work in your life, perhaps He wants to meet with you there. Would you lift your eyes off the challenges and open your heart to God? And that's something so important.
Some of us, as we go into the new year, you face something that causes fear. I believe God wants to say to you, do not fear. Do not fear. I want to walk with you and do something new, maybe even a resurrection work. The pandemic may have killed something, but God says, I will bring something to life in your family, in your relationships, in your work life. Will you give your fears to the Lord? God wants to bring faith, not fear. God, in the new year, God wants to bring faith into your life, not fear. If you're facing a struggle or a fear, would you bring it before the Lord? If you want to discover your potential, would you ask God to show it to you today and open uh, His heart to you? I want to pray for you. I want to remind you that at the end of a God-ordained potential is God Himself. That's why He wants you to come to know Him. God wants to meet with you and lead you in His plans. And there is divine potential in you. If you want to meet with God, you need to ask God into your life. You need to say, God, you show me, you lead me, I want to follow you. You open your heart to me and show me my potential. Show me the way to go. I want to follow you. God wants to connect with you. He gave his only son for you. So this Christmas time, as we come to the end of this year, would you open your heart to the Lord? Would you ask God to come and meet with you? I want to just say a very simple prayer. And I want to invite you, wherever you are watching this video, would you just quieten your heart right now? And would you just... Posture yourself in an atmosphere of prayer. And I want to invite you to just pray a very simple prayer with me. If you're saying, Pastor, I've never really asked God into my life, but I want to meet with the Lord. I want to learn to hear His voice. I want Him to forgive me of my mistakes and connect with my potential to give me courage over my fears as I go into the new year. Pastor, if I want to receive the Lord, would you pray with me? If that is the prayer of your heart, I just want to invite you right now, as we all bow our heads and close our eyes, would you just say this prayer and repeat it line by line after me? You can say it in your heart quietly, but you mean it with all your heart. And I know that God will meet with you on this Christmas day. So let's pray this prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus Christ into the school of the world. He was crucified and he died. And he rose again. And he is now the covering for my life. I want to receive him as my savior, the one who rescues me from my mistakes. I want to receive him as my Lord. Teach me to hear his voice. Help me to connect with you to be able to follow your plans for my life. I pray as I go into the new year that you will fill me with your presence and help me to walk with you, that I will not be alone but to know the presence of God every day of my life, to know that you are real to life with me every day. I receive you as my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. May you draw near to God, because God wants to draw near to you. So if you can, after the program, we're going to end very soon, share with our church members. Perhaps they have invited you into this program. And as you are in the homes, share with, with one another how you, how you have felt, you know, about God from this message, all right? All right, praise the Lord. Okay, so we have almost come to the very end of the program tonight already. But before we go, okay, what is one more thing that we have tonight? And that is the Blessing Day. Everybody say Blessing Day. Come on, yeah. So for this tonight, uh, Blessing Day, we are going to bless three persons, okay? And, and I hope that you have already submitted your details to qualify for the Blessing Day because the submission is already closed, unfortunately, okay? So yeah, we have all the, the names already. And uh, can I check how many in, inside there? Four, well, so wow, we have 43 names in our participation of our Blessing Day. So are you ready? Okay. I'm going to bring back Amos to help me along with this. Okay, come, Amos, and uh, let's do this together. Blessing Dave. Right. He got 43 names here in this blessing box. Yeah, and for the blessing Dave. Yeah, before we start, right? Yeah, we're going to see what is the prizes. Whoa. Yeah, so we're going to start off with the third prize. Okay. Yeah, so the third prize is very handy. 
Uh, let me show you. Uh. Let's see what is the third prize. Very handy. Can you make a guess what that is? Drum roll and it is the... Let's take a look. Wow. It is a air fryer. Wow, air fryer. Okay. Okay. So one person is going to be very blessed to get the air fryer. And all your 43 names are all inside there. And with my very anointed hands, I'm going to go in and then select the blessed person. Let's take a look. Let's see okay. who. Drum roll at home. You can tap your hand and I'll see. And it's the person is. I can't see. So it's very fair and square. All right. Let's take a look. Okay. This person is... Mr. Arthur Lee. Congratulations, oh, Arthur congratulations. Lee. Uh, wow. <laughs> congratulations, Arthur. You have just won for yourself an air fryer. So I'll be waiting for your fried chicken to feed me again. <laughs> yeah, so it's a very handy one. Right. So, Arthur Lee, I hope you enjoy the air fryer. Yeah, if not, you also can... Do also a bit of research and there are many things you can do with an air fryer. Yeah. Okay, so your name is down here. I'm going to put your name on the air fryer to tell us that this air fryer belongs to you. Okay. All right. Second prize. Right, second prize. As Pastor Shakes is the blessed bow, I will get the second prize. And the anointed hand. Let's take a look at what the second prize is. And the second prize is... Wow! Drop my face! Yes! The second prize is a hamper that is worth a hundred dollars. Yes! There are a lot of stuff inside. Right. Okay, who is the blessed person? Let me shake it. And again, I'm going to close my eyes and put in my anointed hand. And... Uh, this goes to drum roll at home. All right, and this goes to but this person by the name of Vanessa Tan. Vanessa Tan, congratulations to you! You just won for yourself a big hamper. Okay, congratulations. Um, so I'm gonna put your name here. All right, let okay. me get the hamper down. Yeah, I think we need to shift. The hamper a little bit because it's just too huge. Are we ready for the final prize? The final prize. Who will be the blessed person? Okay, let's take a look at what this prize is. And it's worth $150. All right. The final prize for tonight. Amos. The final prize is a coffee machine. Whoa. And it's not only a coffee machine. Let me show you what it comes with. What does it come with? It's a Nescafe coffee machine and it comes complimentary with... The... you got two boxes of coffee that yeah. you, can, you, can, means you can use immediately. And not only that, you get a cup. Look at the cup at the picture. It's the exact cup that you're going to get with the coffee machine. Okay, so the coffee capsules are there and it is Nescafe and with the cup. Are you ready? Drum roll at home. Come on. Drum roll at home. Let's shake this. Yeah. And finally, I'm going to activate my anointed hand. And I'm going to close my eyes. Fan square. And it goes in. Give it a swirl. And drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Who is the blessed one? All right. We have it. We have it. And this person... All right, it's a lady. Wow, perfect. It's a lady. Okay, all you gentlemen out there, I'm so sorry. It's a lady here. And this lady, her first name starts with the letter C. Letter C. C. <laughs> okay, ho, ho, ho. letter C. And then the surname, the surname is H. 
Itch. All right, and the, her name is Christina Ho. <laughs> Christina, you just won yourself a coffee machine. Yes. I'm sure you're going to enjoy this coffee machine and your name is going to be here. Congratulations to, to you. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give all of us a big, big hand. Amen. Amen. That's right. All right. So, all the three very blessed person, we will contact you to arrange for the prize collection after that. All right. So, we will get to you and we will bring uh, the prize to you. Okay. Okay. Now, so, Thank you so much for your participation. Thank you so much for being here in our Christmas celebration online via Zoom. I hope you have been blessed. I hope that you have a very meaningful night. And I hope that you have enjoyed yourself very much as much as I have enjoyed myself tonight. And we have to say goodbye to all of us already. God bless you. Have a blessed, blessed Christmas tonight and an advanced Happy New Year 2022 to all of us. Okay? Good night, everybody. Wave your hands. Bye. Good night.